everyone and welcome back we are just going to continue our video on flesh meat we are continuing the book councils and diet it says the diet appointed man in the beginning did not include animal food we established that right not not until after the flood when every green thing on earth had been destroyed did man receive permission to eat flesh in choosing man's food in eden the lord showed what was the best diet in the choice made for israel he taught the simple lesson he brought the israelite out of egypt and undertook their training that they might be a people for his own possession through them he desired to bless and teach the world he provided them with the food best adapted for this purpose, not flesh, but manna. The bread of heaven. It was only because of their discontent and their murmuring for the flesh part of Egypt that animal food was granted them, and this only for a short time. Its use brought disease and death to thousands. Yet the restriction to a non-flesh diet was, not ne was never heartily accepted. It continued to be the cause of discontent and murmuring, open or secret, and it was not made permanent. permanent. So we see what the flesh diet does. It doesn't make us to become reasonable. What it does, it, it makes us to become what? Discontent. It makes us murmur and do all sorts of other things and also the use of it because God gave them manna for 40 years. Those who wanted to eat the flesh, the flesh part, were granted it, but with a cause, disease and death flocked them. Sometimes we may wonder why we are suffering with certain things. What about your diet? Just, just think about it. Remember when we did the video before, in the early part of it, it talked about what? God teaching you how to do things. Some of the recipes today, there are a lot of health recipes today, healthy recipes. Not just Seventh-day Adventists are changing their diet. A lot of people in the world are seeing the benefit of eating a non-flesh diet. And they are reaping the benefit of it. God is blessing them because of it and we who have been given a health message pointing to us to show us the benefit of coming off of the meat to a more substantial diet a diet more that God approves we don't want to be murmuring we don't want to be fine in those categories whether it's open or secret when you read Leviticus chapter 11, you see all the food, the flesh that God had permitted ancient Israel to eat and the ones that they were not permitted. And even those that were permitted, they were told to do it in a certain way. The blood was supposed to be removed and all these things. They had a certain way it was supposed to be done. So upon the settlement in Canaan, the Israelites were permitted the use of animal food, but under careful restrictions, which tended to lessen the evil result. So you see what it do when you follow the restriction, carefully follow the restriction? It lessens the evil result. Because sin is evil, we know that. Diseases are evil and all these things that come along with it. That all these things are evil things. They're not of God. So the use of swine flesh was prohibited, which means it was not supposed to be used. As also of other animals, of birds and of birds and fish, whose flesh was pronounced unclean. Of the meats permitted, the eating of the fat and the blood was strictly forbidden. Some people today, when you buy food from the restaurant, when you eat certain things, how is the food prepared? You don't know how the food is pre prepared. You don't know how the animal died. You don't know if the animal had disease. You don't know if they're telling you the truth. You understand? 
only such animal could be used for food as were in good condition. No creature that was torn, that had died of itself, or from the blood, from which blood had not been carefully drained, could be used as food. How is your food prepared today, brethren? When we hear, I, I do agree that um, persons bring about removing flesh for your mere diet very harshly. They bring it about in a way that's not even, you don't even want to hear about it. But God wants us to do this for our good. It is for, the, for our good when God removes something, tells you to remove it. In the beginning, he gave Adam a, a diet free from flesh. Then he permitted man to eat it after the flood. Then he's coming back to tell you, time to get rid of it. What are you going to do? A lot of persons argue that, open the Bible, just give me the Bible. Don't you see you should eat this and eat that? When we start like that, that means we reject the prophet. We reject anybody else that writes who, who God has inspired. So when God said to us, this is what I give you. And then he come and he tell you, you do this. When God said to you, do this. And then he comes back and tell you, don't do this. And then he tell you in the future, okay, do this. We just have to obey. Whatever God say. If he tells us to eat a flesh meat carefully, this is how you sh should be do it. If you decide that you're going to eat meat, this is how it's supposed to be done and we carefully follow the restriction. And he come back and say, you know what? Because of everything that is happening and the diseases that is upon the animal kingdom and all these things, I am taking this away from you. It's for our best. We just have to obey. When it comes to health reform, it's a matter of obedience. God is calling us to a higher standard and it calls for obedience and we have to follow. By departing from the plan of divinely appointed for their diet, the Israelites suffered great loss. They desired flesh diet and they reaped its result. They did not reach God's ideal character or fulfill his purpose. This is what it is saying. The Lord gave them their quest, request, but what? Sent leanness into it, their soul. They valued the earthly above the spiritual and the sacred preeminence, which was his purpose for them, they did not attain. They couldn't attain it because God wanted to give them angel food, but that, even the food from heaven was not enough for the Israelites. They wanted more. They, they, they craved the flesh above the spiritual and they reap the cause. What are we going to do? The Lord plainly told his people that every blessing would come to them if they would keep his commandments and be a peculiar people. He warned them through Moses in the wilderness specifying that health would be the reward of obedience so you see it's a matter of obedience when god tell you to do something and then he say you know what it's time for you to stop doing it it's a matter of obedience but he's not going to force us as seven adventists and beat us with a stick if we don't want to adhere to the health the health laws and to come away from the flesh diet He's not going to do that. He's given us a choice. If he didn't do that for Satan, why would he do that for us? Obey him. The state of mind has largely to do with the health of the body. And a lot of people argue this. What does health, eating healthy have to do with spiritual things? The state of mind has largely to do with the health of the body and especially with the health of the digestive organs. As a general thing, the Lord did not provide his people with flesh meat in the desert because he knew that the use of this diet would create disease and insubordination. He knew it. When God 
rescued, when God brought, fulfilled his promise and bring the Israelites out of Egypt, he, he could have given them a flesh diet. He could have cooked it. He could have worked a miracle as Christ did with the, 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 the boy with the five, the, the bread and the loaves. He could have worked a miracle just like that and give them flesh. He is God, but he gave them manna for a reason. And today we still don't understand. We still do not want to understand because we want to do our own thing. But if you are willing, if you are willing to do what God wants you to do, God is going to open ways for you. Ways that you didn't even know were there. It's, he says, In order to modify the disposition and bring the higher powers of the mind into active exercise, he removed from them the flesh of dead animals. He gave them angel food, manna from heaven. And that is why inspiration always come back to say, as a minister of the gospel, you should be leading by example and you should not have flesh upon your table. If you're a minister today and you still have flesh on their table, I'm not condemning you, but I'm asking you to stand up. Stand up to the cause. Stand up to that call that God has given you and lead by example so that those who are looking at you would want to do the same. Our habits of eating and drinking show whether we are of the world or among the number whom the Lord, by his mighty clever of truth, had separated from the world. These are his peculiar people, zealous of good works. God has spoken in his word in the case of Daniel and his three companions. There are sermons upon health reform. God has spoken in the history of the children of Israel from whom their good he sought to withhold a flesh diet. He fed them with bread from heaven. Man did eat angel food. But it wasn't enough for them because they crave the earthly things more than the heavenly things. And that is why out of everybody that left Egypt, Caleb and Joshua went into the land. Every other person was born in the wilderness there. Those whom God came to save, he had to put them to sleep for the best of his people. We don't understand what the flesh diet is doing to us. We don't understand why God wants to take it away. But they encouraged the healthy, earthly appetite and the more they centered their thoughts upon the flesh parts of Egypt, the more they hated the food which God gave them to keep them in health physically, mentally, and morally. They longed for the flesh part and in this, they just as many in our time have done Mm. It makes you want to think a lot. What do we so desire? The earthly things or the spiritual things? It is not time that all should aim to dispense with flesh food. Isn't it high time, brethren, that we dispose of this from off our tables? I remember there's a statement I talk about a time will come when milk and these things should not be used, should be discarded. From the time Sister White write them to now, do you think it's time we start doing that? I'm not telling you to get off of what, throw these things away and then have nothing to eat. You can gradually come away from it. But you have to start somewhere. You have to try. You have to try. We have to try. We have to. How can those who are seeking to become pure, refined, and holy 
that they may have the companionship of heavenly angels, continue to use as food anything that has so harmful an effect on soul and body. How can they take the life of God's creatures that they may consume the flesh as luxury? And let them rather return to the wholesome and delicious food given to man in the beginning and themselves practice and teach their children to practice mercy towards the dumb creatures that God had made and has placed under our dominion. Is it for their own good that the Lord counseled the remnant church to discard the use of flesh meat, tea, and coffee and other harmful foods? There are plenty of other things on which we can subsist that are wholesome and good. Those who use flesh meat disregard all the warning that God has given concerning this question. They have no evidence that they are walking in safe paths. They have not the slightest excuse for eating the flesh of dead animals. God curse is resting upon the animal creation. Many times when meat is eaten, it decays in the stomach and creates disease, cancers, tumors, pulmonary diseases are largely caused by meat eating. If you didn't know, now you know. That is why when you have cancer, the first thing the doctor tells you to do, one of the things is to try and get off the meat. Some will tell you get off. Some will tell you try and get away from it. Try and eat. Try not to eat red meat. Try not to eat this. God wants us to get off of these things completely. But he wants us to be wise. He wants us to be able to what? Come up with ways. Come up with recipes. Mix up some things. And when it do look, it tastes good. Try to remember what you do. Ask God to show you ways to make healthy dishes. We had to come up with ways. Half of the recipes that exist today concerning vegan did not exist some years back. Because what God is inspiring more and more people to make helpful dishes, not only for their benefit, but his people are being benefited from it too. God wants us to be the lighthouse. He wants us to be the light. He wants us to show others the way. How can we show others the way if we ourselves are not walking in that way? We can't do it. That's why it's a, is it for their own good? It is for their own good that the Lord what counsels the remnant church to discard the use of flesh meat. Oh, if everyone could discern these matters as they have been presented to me. Those who are now so careless, so indifferent in regard to their character building. Those who plead for indulgence in flesh, diet, flesh meat diet would never open their lips in justification of an appetite for the flesh of dead animals. Such a diet contaminates the blood in their veins and stimulates the lower animal passion. It enfeebles keen perception and vigor of thought to understanding of God and the truth and a knowledge of themselves. I know of persons today before when they were eating meat, they just couldn't understand and now they're saying, you know, Sister Cherry, since I started doing this, I've seen things a bit more clearer now. Sometimes we don't see certain things because we are disobedient. And not until we start taking that foot forward that God reveals more and he blesses us. God wants to bless us, but we are to be obedient. The blessings of God are to, to those that obey. Animals are becoming more and more diseased. And it will not be long until animal food will be discarded by, by many seventh Adventists. Foods that are helpful and life-sustaining are to be prepared. So that men and women will not need to eat meat. We have to come up with ways, simple ways. Some persons can tell you, I can eat certain things raw. Just like that, I can just eat it. And it doesn't do anything for some person. The stomach are a bit sensitive. They would have to cook it. They would have to do it in a certain way. Do what works for you. But try your best to get off the meat. But do whatever works for you. 
when I was at Kurabang, Sister White speaking, many that were great meat eaters came into my family. And when they would sit at my table, when not a particular of meat was served, they would say, well, if you have food like this, I can do without meat. I think that our food satisfies our family. I tell our family, whatever you do, do not get poverty stricken, a poverty stricken diet. There's a lot of persons in this world today. I'm not, I'm talking about um, who, who said they were Rastafarians and so on. And they came back on the meat because they were sick. God don't want his people to have a, a poverty stricken diet. God wants us to do what? I've listed what God tells us makes up the wholesome things for us. You get a bit of everything and you will get what you, your body needs. Try dishes. The persons who try so many things. You may not be a good cook. The internet is there. You see the blessing in the internet. The internet is there. Whatever you want to cook in this life. If you put it in Google, you're going to find it. You're going to find so many of it. And you can still make it in the way you want. You can substitute other things and make it the way you want it to be. You, it says what? Place enough on the table to nourish the system. You must do this. You must invent and invent and study all the time and get up the very best dishes you can so as not to have a poverty stricken diet experiment my father one day had um made me a, a peas pie all different type of peas i still don't even know how to make it but it was so good because he's vegetarian too but he made it for himself try things out experiment with things and do whatever you can to get after meat. Please. I am asking you. I am pleading with you. My closing thought says. God wants us to be. To have what? God wants us to perfect Christian character. Sorry. By obeying the laws of God. And the laws of health. Our souls will prosper. Even as our health prospers. May God grant that all of his true-hearted children will put forth every effort to rise to the standard he has chosen for us in the strength and help of the Mighty One of Israel. Brethren, I thank you for listening. Please share the videos with others. We have a work to do. And a short time in which we are to do it. Don't we want to be on the side of God? Let us have a closing word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father. What I brought forth for your people today. I pray that they may get even more from it. Every time they listen. Every time they study that, you will give them more. I pray, Lord, that you be with your people. We have a work to do as Seventh-day Adventists. Probation is fast closing. What are we going to do? We have a standard to reach. We have characters to perfect through your help. Let everyone that desire perfection and desire to reach the standard of God take hold of his divine hands. That he will bless them and that he will teach them and that he will never leave them. This is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. My beloved family members, may God bless you until next time. Whenever we try, God will be there to help. 
help somebody who you know need help too. God bless you.